Hey guys, this is Anand. In recent years, flagship smartphones have been getting better in terms of camera, build quality and performance. However, quietly in the background, budget smartphones have been doing the same. So I decided to test one out. This is the new £120 Wiley Fox Spark Plus. The box itself is clean and the unboxing experience feels more premium than the price would suggest. Sliding out from the box, we find the phone on top. Underneath that is a decently sized 2000 200 milliamp hour battery, beneath which is documentation in various languages. Next is the micro USB cable that is included. However, you do not get a plug with the phone at this price point. The Spark Plus itself has a build quality that doesn't give away its price. The gold accent on this camera, speaker grille, and the ring around the device make it look a lot more expensive than it is. Whilst the body is plastic, the different parts fit together perfectly, Overall, it inspires confidence that it isn't just going to fall apart the first time you drop it. The phone has a removable back, which exposes where the removable battery goes, and three slots. The one on the left is for microSD expansion up to 32GB. The other two on the right are for the dual SIM support. So with this phone, you can use two different mobile providers. So if you're traveling, you can use your home SIM as well as your roaming SIM to save money. On the bottom of the phone, we find the microUSB port for charging. On the left side, the volume rocker, and the right, the power button. On top, we find the headphone jack, which is a nice inclusion, seeing as phones that cost at least six times as much don't have this. On the back, we find the 13 megapixel camera and the rear facing speaker. And finally, on the front, we have an 8 megapixel selfie camera and notification light, topping the 5 inch 720p IPS display. So, about that screen, at 294 pixels per inch, the resolution is decent and just shy of the 326 of the iPhone 7. As it is an IPS display, you won't get the same contrast that you get with an AMOLED panel, but at this price point, it's much better than I expected. I do have some criticisms of the panel though. It's a bit warmer than I'd like, and the screen itself has a, like a slightly yellow tinge to it. And on top of that, it's not as bright as I'd like outside, which makes it very difficult to see. On the other hand, the viewing angles are great, and there isn't much backlight bleed. So what is the media experience like on the Spark Plus? Well, it's great. The screen is vibrant enough that movies and TV shows look good. However, the rear-facing speaker is seriously quiet, even at max volume. So with the Apple event, I got a chance to see Tim take the stage and surprisingly announce that Apple partnered with Nintendo to bring Mario to the iPhone, which is awesome. So go for headphones at all times. There is one issue that I found, however. Whilst watching YouTube videos, the video would randomly zoom in to the top left of the screen a few minutes in. It wasn't with every video, but it occurred often enough that it was a pain, and nothing I could do would fix it. But what about performance? The phone itself is pretty snappy, but there is the occasional time where you'll see a drop in frames. Opening up apps and multitasking is not as fast as other flagship phones, as is expected with only 2GB of RAM. Installing essential apps does take up a lot of space, so I'd recommend getting a microSD card to expand the 16GB of available memory. Running GeekVench 4 on the Spark Plus and the iPhone 6S, it's clear to see that the MediaTek processor isn't going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with high-end phones. A few moments later... It scored 595 on the single-core tasks, which would be a good indicator of real-world performance. The almost stock Android experience helps keep the phone snappy on such limited resources, and its, and its performance is comparable to a Moto G3 from yesteryear. There are issues though. The GPU benchmarks are anemic averaging around 6 frames per second in the OpenGL benchmark that it completed. However, in day-to-day -day gaming, it handles it perfectly well. There are some quirks, however, volume up and down, switch direction in landscape from the standard portrait mode, which takes time getting used to, and occasionally, when trying to launch the camera from the lock screen, it will display an error message. Also, there's no NFC, which is a big omission from the phone. What about that camera? Cameras were usually what let down budget smartphones. Whilst performance and build have come extremely far, it's more expensive to develop a good camera solution. So I wasn't expecting much. The front facing 8 megapixel shooter is good enough for the job. The photos are grainy, even in good light, and the dynamic range is really poor. But for the odd selfie, it's acceptable. The 13 megapixel rear camera is much better. There's less noise and it handles bright environments well. However, it does suffer in darker scenarios and the flash does little to save the result either. Comparing it to an iPhone shows you 
what spending a lot more gets you in terms of the camera. So with all of this taken into account, what's the battery life like? Well, that 2,200mAh battery gets me through a full day just about. I'd get around 4 hours of screen on time, with heavy usage days, with lots of gaming, Netflix and web browsing. However, on the days where I used the phone less, the battery was still in the low teens by the end of the day. The standby times aren't great either. Leaving the phone completely alone, I'd only get 3.5 days before it died. So don't expect to get the same standby times as you see on the iOS side. So for £120 or $180, is the Wiley Fox Spark Plus really worth it? Well, it is quite a bargain. It undercuts other budget smartphones from companies such as Moto. It isn't the perfect Android experience, but nonetheless, it's something I could definitely recommend at this price point for someone's first phone. Or if you're just looking for a cheap travel phone. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. If you did, please drop a like down below and subscribe for more content. I aim to post a video about once a week, and my iPhone 7 video will be dropping really soon. Once you've done that, head to the description and find my social media handles so you can see get a behind the scenes look at what I do. Uh, if you don't want to do that though, well this is the end of the video, so bye.